have a special guest with us here today, my dear friend, Mikhail, or what we call him Mish today, Mish Fomenko. Mish is the youth pastor of the Rain Dog TV. That's right. At a fantastic church called the Image Church. That's right. So I just want to say it's an honor to be here, and, uh, and I'm really excited to see what, uh, how God's going to use it to really impact people. And uh, it's, it's an honor. I'm glad I can be your first guest. Yeah. So, a uh, quick question. Let's get to know you a little bit first. Because obviously I do, but just for everybody yeah. that's watching. How old are you? I'm 27 <laughs> years old. I am one of seven children, number three. I uh, grew up in a country called Moldova, a really small country over in uh, Eastern Europe. They got, they, got the, they got some of the best wine in the world. I've oh. never tasted it before, but oh. that's what I hear. <laughs> I grew up in a Christian home, pretty much. Um, that is my seminary. Right there. Yeah. I went to a Christian school. Yeah. Um, uh, for college, I ended up graduating from the University of Washington. Yeah, yeah. I got a minor in business and a major in uh, in a psych in psychology. So love working with people, dealing with people. It's my heart, my passion. Got put inside of me now. I'm in the ministry. You want to tell us a little bit about the rain? What it's like? What to expect? Mm -hmm. Your vision for it? Absolutely. The rain, uh, uh, in my opinion, is uh, probably the coolest youth ministry around. Honestly, like coolest people, phenomenal worship. God's doing some yeah. awesome stuff. And one of my biggest passions is really to raise up a young generation, young people that will really um, go after the call of God in their life, not settle for things, but really get passionate about what, where, wherever it is that God called them, whatever sphere of their life. And one of my biggest things is really to, to not just have them see me do, you know, pray for people and see people get healed and do different things, but really to equip them to get out into their into their field, into their sphere of influence, and begin to see God move. Uh, you can check out more at the link right here. The rain TV. That's right. So check out more about the ministry. Uh, so Mish, growing up, um, you had a Christian father. Yep. Uh, was he a minister or a pastor? Or? Yes, I grew up in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. And the uh, interesting thing is, I uh, grew up in a country called Moldova. And my dad was, um, he, he worked as like a, as like a, a transporter. He uh, basically drove around different ministers, uh, different bishops, different people. Yeah. And he was communist at the time. And it was, it was interesting. And uh, to this day, we even still have home videos of, um, my family meeting in the forests and really being persecuted for the faith and having our wow. services in wow. the woods. It was intense. And dad was definitely um, helping out with, um, you know, with different ministers and different ministries all the time. We even hosted a lot of services in our, in our, in our house when I lived there. When we moved to the, the good old US of A in 1989, um, I was six years old. And um, a couple years later, my, my father was ordained as a minister at our church as an associate pastor guy. So I really grew up under um, a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, wisdom, and it was, it was amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. And the purpose of this blog, obviously, is to inspire people as we recount the stories within our family's life. But of course, it's opened up to families like Misha's family since he comes from such a strong and rich background. My grandpa, they were from outside of the capital city. He was actually the first um, believer in the whole area. There was some, um, I don't know, some missionaries that came through town and told him about Jesus, he, and he became the first Christian there. Ended up starting a church, planting three more churches. So I'm now a third generation pastor. It's so my grandpa, and then my dad, and then now now myself. My father passed away about uh, six years ago now, I believe. One thing that really sticks out to me about my father and the legacy he left for me and my family is um, really he was a man of faith. He was a man that stepped out, and he literally believed in miracles, believed God would do different things, even though he didn't always see it. He always taught us to believe it. And, I know some just some crazy stories uh, I've shared in the past, and um, one of the ones that really comes to my mind really, really strongly is um, um, when we came to America. My dad obviously um, didn't have a career, didn't have an education. Obviously, we did struggle financially, and um, one of the, my dad's biggest dreams for us to come here um, obviously was religious freedom and also an opportunity for um, myself and my family to really become something, really um, to live out our dreams. Whereas in a small country of Communism, you didn't have that opportunity. I remember one time he, he borrowed his wallet out and his checkbook and he put them on the table. He had all of us kids. I was probably seven or, or so years old, seven, eight. He got all of us kids together in the living room. He's like, hey guys, we're going to believe that God's going to provide us for a super, supernaturally. He's going to do something. And he would have all of us kids come and lay our hands on his wallet, on his on his checkbook. And we began to just, we even like, he did the whole, the whole thing where we walk around the table as, as claim the city and just believe for God. And what was cool is, is my dad, when he told us, that God is real and that we can believe in in, uh, in, in in how real He is. And as kids, when your dad says that, you believe it. It's, it's natural. And I grew up yeah. just literally like believing that God was going to do supernatural things. And we have so many testimonies I could tell you time for time. People, you know, like big gifts, uh, you know, when we're buying our first house, giving us, you know, fifteen, twenty um, uh, um, thousand dollars, just different things, just uh, literally supernatural 
things that God would do like in my family's life. One thing I can really say is the legacy my, my father left for me is really just faith and believing, you know, that God is extraordinary God and He wants to do extraordinary things. How did you remember those testimonies? Was there traditions or anything like that that your family did uh, to remember the times God provided or the healings in your family? My uh, father loved to do is we had this thing we had we had family prayer and every single night That's good. and basically devotions and time together and. Um, one thing I definitely will carry on with my family, my future kids that I'm going to have, hopefully, thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> every single night, as a family, we got together before bed, literally prayed together, read the Bible. He would like just show us things from the Bible. We would just talk about what God's doing all the time, constantly. We would always hear about, here's what God's doing, you know, here's how God did in our life, and we'd pray together as a family and believe together as a family. And I, I definitely see myself um, writing a book in the future. I definitely want to see like just what God's done in my life and what I've seen just to pass it down to my generations but like one of my favorite verses in the bible is uh uh revelations chapter 19 verse 10 where it says the testimony of jesus is a spirit of prophecy and um i strongly strongly really believe in um not only having testimonies but sharing them because yeah. when you share what, what jesus has done the testimony of what jesus has done in your life it becomes a spirit of prophecy for somebody else and i and i, and I think this is, this is an amazing thing that you're, that you're doing here steven is it's just in a, in a way just to get videos, just people to see what God is doing. Yeah, totally. And I definitely see myself writing a book in the future. I'm definitely going to continue to do, you know, the family devotions and different things and just talk about what God has done. Because that's definitely one, one of my passions and heart is just to really show, hey, look, look what God has done. If he yeah. did it before, he can do it again. Exactly, exactly. The title of this blog and this website is Remember When God, fill, fill in the blank. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Remember when God provided. Remember when God showed up remember when god healed i don't i don't even know exactly if i could break down to one specific thing but when i say to remember god it just a cluster of things just come to my mind of wh like what god has done in my in my life personally and uh the testimony that he's put in my life and when when uh sometimes people are afraid to share the gospel they're afraid that they don't know what to say they don't know what verses to use but for me the one thing i always tell them i was like if someone's asking you about why god's real in your life yeah. tell them the testimony of what happened to you that's one yeah. thing people can never argue is what god did for you exactly Mish, thank you for being with us today. Uh, Pleasure. Hopefully it inspires plenty of people out there, my family included. Love. Uh, but anybody who's watching this, uh, Mish Fomenko, Love. check him out on Twitter. Just check him out. Facebook. Check out TheRain.TV. We're located TV. in... Linwood, Washington. That's right. Revival City. <laughs> Love it. All right. Hey, remember when God did mighty things in your life or whatever else you want to fill in the blank. Mish, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Love you, man.